I hope everybody's having an awesome week. Welcome back to the Redleaf Exotics channel. I'm Dom, and I wanted to share a really beautiful and charming highland species today, Nepenthes jamban. Jamban comes from an Indonesian word, which means toilet, and it's totally clear to see why they gave it that name. They really do look like little toilet bowls. This species was discovered around 2004 and officially published in 2006. So it hasn't been found that long ago. A lot of new species are being found in the 20th century, which makes it even more exciting uh, to see what's out there and what's growing, and who knows what other species they'll find up in these mountain ranges. Nepenthes jamban is endemic to Sumatra, where it could be found growing in the Barisan Mountains. It grows between 1,800 and 2,100 meters above sea level in montane forest. It's kind of crawling and scrambling and vining through scrub where it displays all of its pictures so beautifully, just sitting there waiting to lure and devour insects. It can be found growing sympatrically with other species such as Lingulata, and there are actually wild hybrids between the two. The pitchers on this species are infundibular, which means cone-shaped, and they produce a really round, kind of bloated throat and super sticky, viscous digestive enzymes. If I stick my finger in here, you could just see it's almost like glue or syrup. And that helps this plant catch larger prey, such as crickets or maybe flies or bees flying by. Uh, anything that's getting in that fluid is not getting out. It is really thick and syrupy. As far as color and pitcher morphology, each individual can vary. Some of them are deep ruby red, some are lime green, some are lime green with a red lip on the uppers. It is so striking, but they do have some nice variation amongst them. And some of the pitchers can be a little larger or smaller depending on the variant. This is one of my favorite seed grown forms in the collection from Exotica Plants. You could see how big the throat is, a nice circular pitcher opening. It definitely gets larger pitchers than some of the other forms here in the collection, but really, really neat looking. As far as cultivation goes, John Bon loves growing in sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss and perlite works around 50-50. Uh, long fiber sphagnum moss and perlite with coconut core can work good too. So those kind of soilless uh, mixtures that most carnivorous plants love growing in, but it does seem to really, really love sphagnum moss. As far as temperature goes, this species loves typical highland conditions, 75 to 80 degrees in the day and dropping around 60 degrees to the high 50s at night seems to keep it really happy. As long as you're getting that 15 to 20 degree drop, you should be good but that's not to say you shouldn't be giving this plant like 85, 90 degree temperatures on the constant. It's probably not gonna be too happy. So nice intermediate kind of cool highland conditions to keep it happy and it grows pretty fast. It enjoys relative humidity levels between 70 and 80% or more. It doesn't want a lot of water sitting on the leaves a lot, but really good consistent humidity and that will make it produce all these charming little pitchers. Although this species can climb to a couple meters in the wild, they are relatively small growing. They don't get huge leaves. The pitchers stay pretty small, and this makes them an ideal species to grow indoors in a specialized grow setup or like larger terrariums. They are highland, so they do need that 15 to 20 degree temperature drop at night. It's so important for the long-term health and beauty of this species. As for all Nepenthes, we only water here with reverse osmosis water. Distilled rainwater and a lot of those clean types of water are gonna work awesome. You're generally looking for a PPM of 30 or below. At least that's what I go by here. If it's above that, I usually don't water the plants. I'll switch my filters or do whatever I have to do, but I like to keep the PPM levels really low and that is what keeps these really happy. When it does get warmer in summer and the days are in the low to mid 80s in the greenhouse and we're not going much below 70, it does kind of slow up. It will keep its pitchers, but just chill out, hang out for the summer. And then once fall comes and the nights start getting cooler, this thing really starts to shine. They really put on a lot more pitchers. There's an explosion of growth. So they do love those cool nights. It really has a positive impact on how well they grow. Although there are a few natural hybrids with this species, it has not been bred a lot in cultivation. I know Exotica just came out with a hybrid that was like Jambon Dubia cross 
ventricosa trismatiensis, and you can really see that shape in there coming through. But this plant has a long way to go as far as hybridization goes and cultivation. And I'm really excited to see what does come around and what we could create here once ours do start flowering. I had one one time flower, but nothing uh, worked as far as hybrids went. And that was a few years ago, but hoping they flower again and we could make some really interesting hybrids. I'm assuming they would be similar uh, to Jacqueline hybrids as far as shape, but maybe not with um, a peristome is dramatic and flared. Not only do I love how small the pitchers are on this species and what they look like, I love growing them in a hanging basket right at eye level to be enjoyed. I find that if they're down on the table, they kind of get lost amongst the larger plants. So right at eye level in my face is definitely one of the best places for this one to grow in the greenhouse and to be enjoyed. Nepenthes jamban is certainly one of the more cool and interesting Nepenthes there are, and definitely a plant I love growing here in the Redleaf Exotics collection. If you guys love Nepenthes and other exotic plants, make sure to subscribe and check back every Wednesday for more videos just like this one. I'm Dominic here at Redleaf Exotics. I will see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.